everyone, it's Misty Fiello, AKA the Mediocre Pacemaker Runner. I am just about to get started on some pre-run yoga. Uh, I like to use yoga with Adrian. Um, she's amazing. If you haven't checked her out, you should. Um, leave a comment below if you have a different pre-run ritual you'd like to share. Um, today, I wanna talk to you about what it is like to run with a pacemaker. Um, and for the most part, it's like running is for any other runner, but there are some things that are unique, at least, I mean, obviously every runner's different, every person with a pacemaker is different, but there are some things that, for me, were very different when I got back into running after having my pacemaker implant. Uh, one thing is that once, initially there was no difference, you know, as I was getting back into shape, but once I got reached a certain level of fitness, all of a sudden I got really tired and tired for a person with heart disease is very scary. I, I call it like I, the way I describe it, I call it basic training tired or I just found out I'm pregnant tired. That is a symptom and it, it's really scary. So it gets you to your doctor pretty quickly. Um, but all I really needed was uh, to see the, the technician there's, there's a technician when you have a pacemaker who tunes your pacemaker um, for tuning. Uh, uh, he, my pacemaker was set to uh, pace if my heart rate fell below 70. And once I got pretty fit in my running, that needed to be adjusted and changed to 50. Uh, once it was changed, then I quit feeling super tired all the time. And, and yeah, so I feel like that's definitely something unique to a person with a pacemaker when they run. Um, having to go in for a tune-up. Um, another thing that was really different is that a lot of runners like to run using heart rate to gauge kind of their intensity, if they're working hard enough on their runs or not working too hard on their easy runs. And people who run with pacemakers obviously cannot do that. Um, so <clears throat> like for me, if I am in an all out sprint, um, it's pretty rare for my heart rate to get up above about 125, 135 beats per minute, which for a normal person would probably tell them they're not working hard enough. So I can't use heart rate to say, how do I keep my easy runs easy, my tempo runs where they need to be in this heart rate zone and, and my sprints, you know, I need to, I just can't, cannot do that. So I use perceived effort. Um, and I also use the talk test. So on my easy runs, can I carry on a conversation? Uh, on my tempo runs, maybe one sentence, couple words. And then on my sprints, obviously, I should struggle to talk at all. Uh, I do find that this causes, um, for me, I think it, I don't maybe advance as quickly as I could if I could use heart rate as a gauge because I feel like it's really hard mentally to hold yourself accountable when you're using perceived effort as what pushes you in your runs. Whereas if you were using something data-driven like heart rate, it would be a little more easy to hold yourself accountable. Uh, but you know, you, you, we do what we can do. It's better than not running at all. Um, another thing, um, so I know I just talked about heart rate and that I couldn't get it up above about 125, 135 beats a minute. I'm gonna kind of contradict my, uh, myself here. So one thing I found is that my heart tends to do weird things on race day. Um, <clears throat> I, th I think it's just nerves. So uh, in my last race, uh, I ran in December, the Mississippi Gulf Coast Half Marathon, which is an amazing race if you haven't uh, participated in this race, you should consider it. It is an awesome, flat, straight course along Highway 90. You have a beach view the whole way, um, straight and flat until it isn't. You hit the I-110 I loop um, and all of a sudden you have this pretty decent kind of sloped hill that you go up for maybe the last mile of the race. Um, and on the particular, on, on this race day, we had a pretty strong northeast wind. So it was, it was a little more challenging than it had been the year before when I ran that race. Um, and I was trying for a sub two hour finish time, which is pretty aggressive for me. My last time in that race was two hours and 23 minutes. Um, but I have been advancing pretty quickly in my training and I felt like this was maybe a reach goal, but something that was not so out of reach that I couldn't do it. 
Um, but on this particular day, we had the wind, um, and I was I was not keeping up with race pace, but I was still doing fairly well. I was uh, up until about mile eight. I was at about a 940 minute mile pace, um, and then once I started to lead up to hitting that hill, I started to get pretty nervous, and I started to get pretty nauseous. Um, I typically take a gel. I use Goo, it's the, the product that works for me, about every three miles when I, when I race. Um, that works for me. Uh, I find, like I don't, I don't use a Goo pre-race, but in my first, before the race starts, but at three miles, at six miles, at nine miles, and 12 miles, I take a, a Goo. Um, and I didn't do the last Goo because I was so nauseous. And I looked down at my watch and it said that my heart rate was at 170 beats per minute. Um, so I feel like that's that's something that's pretty unique to pay, pacemaker uh, people who run with pacemakers uh, that that 170 beats per minute can mess up your race. So I ended up finishing that race at a time of two hours and 15 minutes, just like about a 10 20 average pace. I'm still really proud of that time, but I feel like if I hadn't had the issue with you know getting getting nervous leading into that hill and my heart rate spiking like that then maybe i would have had a little bit better of a time um another thing that is very unique maybe really doesn't have to do with running but more all the things that we do as runners to support our running um is that when you do things like planks any kind of core work push-ups uh yoga which i'm about to do um or like any cross training like butterfly when you swim um, it can be a little bit uncomfortable um, and and you have to be a little careful like obviously talk to you know your pacemaker technician to your doctor but um, even if there's no real danger it isn't it doesn't feel good to have a piece of metal kind of you know jammed into your clavicle or into your shoulder blade as you're working out and it's something that you definitely have to get used to i will say that um the, the skinnier i am i guess i'm like maybe skinny start the wrong word but um i kind of fluctuate in weight i'm up a little bit now because i'm in i'm training for the rock and roll half marathon and i don't like to eat in a cal calorie deficit when i'm training but um, when I'm maybe about 10 to 15 pounds lighter, it's, it's a little worse. So um, you might see if you start running that as you lose weight or as you focus on nutrition and lose weight, if, if, if that is one of your goals with a pacemaker is to lose weight, that that's gonna start to be something that you notice that maybe it's like equivalent to, hey, the first time I put on a seatbelt, whoa, this doesn't feel good. Um, so I feel like that's kind of something unique, just something you have to work through when you have a pacemaker and you are a runner. Yeah, so um, th those are some things I wanted to share, what it's like to run with a pacemaker. Um, if you like this video, please click the like button and the subscribe button. If you have something to share, please comment below. Uh, and until the next video, keep moving and remember how lucky you are.